Ew, that's disgusting. That's tire. It's tire shreds. That's gross. Yum. So basically what I'm doing is rebooting my axles from the welded because I think I blew up the LSD that's in the car. Um, it doesn't lock. Only one side, my right side, gets power. So like when going around turns and stuff, the inside wheel will tend to break loose without me really even hitting the gas. So I got some replacement boots that I have on the axles for the LSD. It's basically, this is the inner. It's a fresh boot I'm gonna use. And a big pack of grease um, that I will use. And then a snap ring that I can use to uh, reassemble the CV joint with. So basically the first step that I'm gonna do is remove the boots from the axle completely. And then I'll show you guys how I go about breaking it all down. These boots were cut and torn, and then for the track at Club Loose, we just wrapped them in duct tape because we needed them basically to just last the day. The duct tape held up, but not, you know, too well as expected. So basically, undid this first one here, slide the axle out of the cup. It's a shame because these have fresh grease on them from before Club Loose. And this will basically be the axle, the CV joint that I'm gonna be taking apart. Uh, there's a little snap ring here. The factory ones don't have little holes for snap ring pliers, the new ones do, so they're a lot easy to reinstall. But this is basically the hardest part of doing a boot swap. And it's just getting a screwdriver underneath each side of the snap rings using one to hold it in place and then another to pry out or underneath. The snap ring is off. You can throw that out. Um, you're basically left with the CV joint. So basically it should just slide off. There we go. There you go. There's your CV. This is your inner CV. So now that that's off, We'll just put it aside with the cup. And then from there, we should be able to, well, in this case, rip the old boot off on that boot. Because even though it's newer grease, it was still exposed. Um, and on track, I know I went off in the dirt. So I'm sure there's some dirt and crap in there. It doesn't help. And you can toss that. So now, moving on to the bottom boot. This is the easier one clean all the grease off the shaft here just basically here I'll just cut same way as before these top ones are a little more difficult so my go-to instead of using these little slip clamps because I use them for H2O on my LSD and the one ended up popping off and popping back on I lost some grease it just got on the bottom side of the car is using a worm gear clamp it's pretty much guaranteed that uh, it's not gonna pop off from the cup and this boot isn't even ripped but we're here and this boot is at minimum from 1999 so going on 20 years old it's like sealed on here it easier sliding off there we go so this is a different style joint I had a set of axles when I first tried replacing the boots that I separated this joint and I was actually unable to get the, the axle bar back into the CV joint. Uh, it's the outer joint. I don't know if it was just a installer error, which is a good possibility, or if it just wasn't meant to come apart. So now that I know that I can just do the snap ring to undo this top one, that's just my go-to method. It's a lot easier. You're gonna wanna get, like I said, all the grease 
as much off as you can. Clean the bar. And like I said, even though this, this is newer, um, on this one the boot wasn't ripped and this grease is newer so it's not as much of a concern if I clean out inside the joint. But since I have full packs, I'm gonna wipe it out anyway. Also, don't use brake clean on your CV joints. Using brake clean on your CVs is a big no-no. You might think it'd be easier to clean off the grease, but it'll probably end up doing more harm than good. Get one of the outers. I just got these off of Rock Auto. It was like 60 bucks for the full set. And basically what I'm gonna do here Open up the grease packet and just start off by squeezing some grease in all these pockets. Work the joint around. Try and get the grease worked in. So once that's done, take your boot, slide down the shift, and then try and get all the grease contained within it. There you go, you got your outer joint is done. We'll throw the aviation clamps on there. Pop this down over the little lip right here. We'll throw the smaller aviation clamp down on there. These things have a lot more grease than the factory. Um, the factory setups. So I'm curious to see if with the welded, the axles are loud and I feel like and on any car welded diffs, the axles are loud. I'm curious to see if all this grease being in here will help quiet down the CVs when they're under load in like parking lot situations. First move is to put the inner on. This is the inner. So you have the inner cup and you have the inner CV boot. The way you can tell the difference is the outer boots are a full circle. The inner boots have these three little indents here and they are for these three little indents here. So the next step is going to be wiping this off a little bit more. So the next step is to put the boot on. So you want to make sure you put the boot on before you go through the trouble of putting the CV back together. So you just want to pop it on. You can slide it down a little further past the lip just to give yourself some room while you reassemble the CV. And basically you just line up the splines and I just have to look at the other axle, but on the CV joint, there's a beveled edge and then there's a flat edge. The flat edge is what you're gonna have facing upward toward you. The beveled edge will face in toward the middle of the axle. So you just line the splines up, press it down. It'll click down onto a little lip into place. And then you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna get your axle grease here and the bag with the snap ring in it. Here's your snap ring. They give you two different kinds of rings, a one without the holes, one with. So I like the ones with the holes because I have a set of snap ring pliers that will make installing this a heck of a lot easier. I need a second set of hands just to help provide some back pressure while I spread these two out and throw them in. Slide the boot back up until it crosses over the lip. And basically, get your grease pack, 
Gonna lay a little bit of grease on the inside first, just around these needle bearings. And uh, something you also wanna do on older axles is inspect the bearing itself for any like heat marks or uh, times in which it had come in straight up contact with the cup. These are clean, you know, there's no heat marks or anything like that on them. So I'll just spin the bearing around. Throw some more back there. Spin the bearing around. Just kind of get it worked in. Cover up the front nice. And just go around the back side of the cup. So I'll just shove that with paper towels. Get it all cleaned up. From here, what I'm going to do is easiest step of this whole swap, and that is just empty out the rest of the grease into the cup. Shake that down. The cup is very full. that back over. We'll bring the boot up. There we go. So it's on. I'll wipe all the grease off on the outside of it. And then we'll throw some aviation clamps on. And you have an axle with fresh boots. These will hopefully last just as long as the factory ones did. In my case, probably not going to, but I'll be happy, happy if I can get next season out of them and to redo them next winter. It's only 60 bucks to redo the whole back set. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. The reason I made this is because um, I've never seen a video about replacing 3000 GT axles, uh, the boots because you can't buy these axles new, so I see a lot of guys that are looking for axles just because they have torn boots. 60 bucks and a little bit of time, and you can basically do it yourself. I'm gonna put a list of the tools that you're gonna need down in the description, so you can have everything that you're gonna need going into it and everything that we use here. I mean, we use basic hand tools and the snap ring pliers. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. There'll be a lot more content of the 3000 coming, and uh, we're gonna be getting ready finished getting ready for the Philly Auto Show, so stay tuned guys and we'll have some stuff coming for you this weekend.